Desley from AXT and today I'm going to show you the NanoLive 3D Cell Explorer. So this is a microscope that takes 3D and 4D images of live cells and fixed cells. So the microscope itself has a rotating arm here. The system uses holographic tomographic microscopy to image your cells in 3D and 4D and requires no stains or markers or dyes. And so the way that it's measuring a sample to give you a 3D image is by measuring the refractive index within your sample. So I'm going to show you how simple it is to use. We take our sample, which is your cells, live cells, in a, a micro dish, or you can also use fixed cells on a slide as well with a glass cover slip. All we do is place the cells onto the stage, and then we're using the software. The software is called Steve we are able to turn on the light source and then find our cells within the dish. So I'm just going to use the XY control on the microscope stage to find our cells. The cells we're looking at today are cheek cells from inside the mouth. So we just did a very simple epithelial scrape and added the cells to uh, just some water in the micro dish. Okay, so here's a cheek cell that we found in the dish. Now you can see that you've got a nucleus, membrane, and lots of vesicles and other things within the cytoplasm. So in order to get a 3D image of this cell, we simply hit the 3D single shot button. We're then able to choose what mounting medium the sample is in, and there's a, a list of various media that you would usually use or buffers that you usually use for sample. Um, in this case I know that it's in water. If you have other media that don't exist in this list then it's quite simple to add a new one based on its refractive index. So if I hit the apply button then the 3D Cell Explorer does its 3D acquisition. So it's using holographic tomography, so spinning and capturing 100 holograms during its spin in order to measure the refractive indices of all of the various components of the cell. And here we have our 3D image. If I just turn up the light, we're able to see a 2D slice of that cell and we have a slider here that enables us to go through those slices. So we can see that the cell is quite curled up, curled at the edges, and it really does have a 3D structure. So the power of the Steve software is that we can actually stain these cells digitally. And it's quite simple to do. Down the bottom here we have a, a list of uh, a series of stains that we can apply. So if I just hit this plus sign, we can choose um, blue color and come to our nucleus and add that color to the nucleus. So when I've clicked a, a pixel or a few pixels within the nucleus, and color them blue, it's found everything else within the 3D um, image and taken everything that has the same refractive index as those few pixels and given them all the blue color. So if we look across here at the 3D view of this cell, we're able to see a very clear nucleus that has been colored in blue by the digital staining. I'll now add a membrane stain as well. So I'll just go through my slices and choose a slice that has a good image of the membrane that shows the membrane clearly and I'll use that to do our staining. If I go to a portion that I want to colour in and I scroll in, I'm able to zoom in on that part of the membrane. So if I now choose red and add a red stain to my membrane, I'm able to actually see that I've colored in a way more than I should have. So actually I've colored outside of the membrane and so I can fix that by just adjusting this box here in the center. So now you can see that we've, we've been able to stain the cell much more clearly. If we look back at our 2D image of the cell, we can actually remove the actual cell layer and come back to our more fluorescent looking image and be able to go through those slices that way as well. So here we've got around 100 slices that are within 30 microns. So our sample size is 30 microns in this case, 30 microns thick, and we have 100 slices in the Z direction of that cell. If we go back to our 3D view, we're also able to see some measurements in terms of the, the X and Y values for the cell. 
So if we look at this one, we can see that this cell is around about 70 microns in the X direction and it's around 75 to 80 microns in the Y direction. So we're able to adjust this view and really see those curls, um, see the round shape of the cell, see that it's not completely flat, it has some structure to it. And uh, you can adjust the dyes, the stains for clarity and for um, opacity. So if you wanted to turn down the red, for example, we can do that. And then we're able to see the nucleus more clearly. And so what's the maximum size cell that you can view on the, with the 3D Cell Explorer? So your maximum thickness of cell that we can image is 30 microns in the Z direction. So if you have cells that you have adhered to a plate and they have stuck down, they'll tend to flatten out a little. So even a large cell like this, which is still 70 microns wide, uh, because it is less than, less than 30 microns thick, if we have a look, we can see that this cell is actually around 15 microns in thickness so it's less than 30 so we're able to image it so all cells or or samples that you're imaging must be less than 30 microns and so the, the images on the screen there you can zoom in on any particular feature to, to get more detail yeah that's right so if we look at this uh, 2d sliced view here we find a spot that looks interesting uh, maybe just the nucleus in this case we can hover at the point that we want to zoom in on and then just scroll with our mouse and look closer at, at the image at a zoomed point. And you can do something similar with the, the 3D image? Yeah, and the 3D image is exactly the same. So find a spot and then just zoom in by scrolling with your scroll bar on your mouse. On our touch screen, we can also um, go through the slices simply by moving through you know, up and down on the screen to go through the slices as well. And so it's very quick to be able to capture an image or a set of images for a sample? Yeah, so the first time you use a dish uh, on the microscope it will have to do a calibration just to um, align the mirrors so that the amount of light getting through the sample is enough to illuminate your sample and, and get an image and that process can take two to three minutes but once that's done, every image taken within that dish will be uh, about three or four seconds. And so how does that relate to the 4D imaging capability? Okay, so for 4D imaging, you can capture images overnight. Um, we can put the microscope inside of an incubator that controls CO2, humidity and temperature. And you're able to capture variable numbers of frames um, throughout the process. So you could do a 10-hour incubation where you're capturing images every 10 minutes and then you can track some event over time. And so what, what's an example of some applications for the 3D Cell Explorer? Okay, so we've done tons of applications. This is a very simple cheek cell that's actually a swab from your mouth, but uh, within the labs we've done a lot, of res um, a lot of samples that are breast cancer cells, we've done bacteria, we've done nematodes, uh, nanoparticle uptake into cells, macrophages, um, lots and lots of different applications.